Meanwhile, the Borneo territories present a different set of challenges. So distant, you know. They don't know whether the people of Sabah and Sarawak could integrate with us. They're not sure about that. Because some of us have never been to Sabah and Sarawak before that. Generally, we did not understand the complexity of the population there. We had assumed that uh, the tribal people were like our orang asli, you know, which was uh, ridiculous. Regardless, the majority in the alliance put their trust in Tunku. Although a lot of us were ignorant about the proposal, but I think we had faith in our leaders. That, I think, gave us the confidence that I think Malaysia will work. Merger is rapidly proving to be an uphill battle for those planning it. They were concerned about putting this puzzle together of these different territories with different histories and at different stages, I suppose, in their political and economic development. On the northeastern tip of the great island of Borneo is Sabah, the home of the Dusun, the Murut, the Bajau and other races. Brunei, the ancient Malay Sultanate, which during the 15th century dominated almost the whole of Borneo. Largest of the three Borneo territories to join in the proposed federation is Sarawak, the land of the Dayak and Iban, Kenya and Puna. Sarawak too has many Malays and Chinese among her people. In the east, things are not looking any brighter. The Borneo leaders are apprehensive about the idea of merger. The Borneo territories and Malaya had hardly anything in common. In Malaya, you have, for example, you have Sultan, you have King, you have three main stream races. Whereas in Borneo now, has more than 40 ethnic communities. People in Sarawak at that time, the level of education is still very limited. The understanding of the, what's happening outside is quite restricted. So their concern was if Malaysia, as they understood it, were to happen, what role can they play? The political environment in North Borneo uh, Sarawak and Brunei were very different. You didn't have political parties, you didn't have a group of people who were very interested in politics. What you have was individual leaders within the community who were starting to have an interest in politics. The Borneo people are wary about the intentions of the Thunku and Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew wanted a federation between Malaya and Singapore. It made a lot of sense because Singapore had no natural resources. Tunku, on the other hand, look at if only Malaya and Singapore federate. Well, the possibility the Malay will be uh, outnumbered by the Chinese. And Tunku, without even having set foot in the Borneo territories, try rope in the Borneo territories. So they both want Malaysia for different reasons. Tunku heads to Borneo on a diplomatic mission. It was alleged that the leadership in Malaya at that time was too assumptuous that Sabah and Sarawak were just like Malays. My complaint was that lots of Malayans, people from Amdo, for example, who visited there, they would make a speech, they would uh, come out, and you know, alaikum, come out with hadiths, everything else. Then, after the event, you realize the whole group was a group of Christians. I think the Tunku probably was naive in thinking, ah, if we get these Borneo people, they're just like us and that world, you know, racially, so on and so forth, that will, it's a counterweight to the Chinese job done. And it wasn't as simple as that, of course. An influential North Borneo leader emerges to oppose this plan, together with leaders from Parti Rakyat Brunei and the Sarawak United Progressive Party, or the SUPP. There was quite a groundswell of opposition to Tunku, and he went on a number of goodwill visits. It, it really stirred up a lot of bad will. 
After the trip to Borneo, Tunku is unsure about the future of merger. The divide between the people of Borneo and Malaya seems too wide. In North Borneo and Sarawak, there was no religious factor. For example, the development of Amno and past in Peninsula, Malaysia or Malaya was all about Islam, uh, Malay nationalism and protection of the sultans. These were non-issues in North Borneo and Sarawak because simply Islam was not a factor. Without the participation of the Borneo state, the demographic balance will not be to Tunku's liking. Next, members of the Legislative Assemblies of Singapore, Malaya, Sarawak, Brunei and North Borneo decide to proceed with formal discussions regarding the idea. The members decided to set up the Malaysian Solidarity Consultative Committee and they discussed this idea that Tung Fung articulated in May. Surprisingly, the committee appoints the sceptical North Borneo leader, Donald Stevens, as their chairman. For months, he has shown reluctance to the idea of bringing North Borneo to merge with Malaya. It is Singapore's Lee who recommends that Stevens heads the committee. Kuan Yu was a very good personal friend of Donald Stevens. They meet up quite regularly, even before the idea of Malaysia was touted. They had a fair idea of how to work together. The Malayan and Singapore leaders look at Donald Stevens as the most influential, the most articulate, and possibly at the time, the most literate of the Borneo Territories leaders. Babak seterusnya kini beralih ke London. Persidangan penting mengenai Malaysia diadakan di antara pemimpin-pemimpin Melaya dengan jemaah Menteri British. Asas perbincangan ialah laporan Sulan Jaya Kabul. Selepas sekian berunding, Tengkuk Durahman dan Perdana Menteri British Tuan Harold Macmillan pun mewujudkan perjanjian bersejarah atas Malaysia itu. Agung dalam persetujuan itu ialah masa peralihan dan penyerahan kedaulatan. The date has been set in London for the new federation to be formed. As with the Merdeka mission in 1956, when Malaya secured its independence, Tunku once again has shown a deft touch when negotiating the formation of a new nation. And he is one step closer to forming one of the biggest territories in Southeast Asia. Jalan untuk tertubuhnya negara baru Malaysia itu sudahlah terbentang dengan jelasnya. Ya inilah yang dikehendaki satu teladan. Karena dunia pada waktu ini bergaduh berbagai-bagai, bergaduh kerana kelas orang ini lain, bergaduh kerana bangsa orang ini lain, bergaduh kerana bahasa orang ini lain, bergaduh kerana agama orang ini lain. Tapi bagi pihak kita, kita boleh hidup dengan baik. Dengan manis muka, dengan perasaan kasih musra antara satu dengan lain. Tidak terkira apa bangsa, apa agama, apa muopa, apa kulit, apa pun kita tak kira. Asal kita boleh duduk sama sekali sebagai satu bangsa. Hidup Malaysia. Hidup Malaysia. Merdeka Malaysia. Merdeka Malaysia. Saya minta rakan saya, uh, 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 Encik Lee Kuan Yu, bagi sepatah dua cakapan kepada tuan-tuan. Sudah seratus lebih tahun Singapura menjadi satu pusat perniagaan dalam Asia Tenggara. Dan satu juta enam ratus lebih orang di Singapura adalah kebolehan, keusahaan yang boleh menolong negeri kita menjadi satu negeri yang lebih bahagia. Itulah maksud Persekutuan Malaysia. Bukanlah sebagai... Radio Moscow cakap ini apa penjajahan yang baru. Kalau bukan kaki tangannya kuasai negeri, dia kata itu penjajahan baru. Tapi kalau kaki tangannya sendiri, dia kata itu bagus itu kemerdekaan yang bebas, dia kata. Merdeka Malaysia!
Bersemangat sikit tuan-tuan. Kalau lemah begini tak dapat merdeka Malaysia. Merdeka Malaysia. Terima kasih tuan-tuan. Kita akui dengan sombong dan megah akan kejayaannya yang cemerlang. Allah lanjutkanlah usianya memandu untung nasib negara baru kita. Merdeka Malaysia.